questions, and I hope I'm hoping for some of you to offer some of your insights or maybe what you've learned, but also then to ask questions. Why is this there? What, what is with that? That sounds really difficult, or this sounds, sounds just like a miracle. So it's, it's got a lot of different um, tenses in it in terms of the emotion of the gospel. So we begin with an introduction today. And the introduction says, as we celebrate the 12 days of Christmas, our gospel today confronts us with the death of innocent children at the hands of Herod. The birth of Christ does not remove the power of evil from our world, but its light gives us hope as we walk with all of the holy innocence of past generations and the people of today who suffer unjustly. In our gathering around the word and the meal, God continues to redeem us, lift us, and carry us as in the days of old. We turn to the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy <coughs> Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amid the darkness of this world, let us confess our sin and welcome the light of God's forgiveness. At this time, we'll have our silence and keep it for reflection as we listen to this morning's prelude, O Little Town of Bethlehem. As I know.
We thank our bell choir for a beautiful piece. We continue with the confession. God of grace and truth, in Christ Jesus, you come among us as light shining in the darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light and have not trusted the good news of great joy. Forgive us and renew our hope so that we may live in the fullness of your love, trusting in the grace of Christ our Lord. The angel said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. With great joy, I announce to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. you. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you know that we cannot place our trust in our own powers. As you protected the infant Jesus, so defend us and all the needy from harm and adversity through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading this morning is from Isaiah 63, verses 7 through 9. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because of all that the Lord has done for us, and the great favor to the house of Israel, that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children whom have, who will not deal falsely, and he became their savior in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The Psalm for today is Psalm 148. And if you'll join me, we'll read it responsibly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, Praise all him. his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their, bo he fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills fruit trees, and all cedars, wild animals, and all cattle, creeping things, and flying birds, kings of the earth, and all peoples, princes, and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Our second reading for this Sunday is from Hebrews chapter 2. It introduces itself with these words. Through Jesus' suffering and death, the trail to eternal salvation has been blazed for us. We do not fear death because he has conquered the power of death. Thus Christ, our merciful and faithful high priest, has the final say over the destiny of our lives. The reading from Hebrews. It was fitting that God for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. 
For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise share the same things so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power over death, that is the devil, and free those who all have their lives were held in slavery by the death, fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself was tested by what he suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Our gospel acclamation which is a part of the service that affirms what we are about to hear in the gospel reading, is from the hymn, Go Tell It on a Mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. The Holy Gospel is, is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now, I invite you to open your Bibles, if you have them, to Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, or to follow along with the bulletin, if you have that. And we, as we read through this, we're going to do some pausing and asking some questions. And if you have an answer or if you have a question, please don't hesitate to raise your hand as we uh, talk about some of the things that we can learn from this text. Now... After the wise men had left, we pause there for a minute. The children, you know who the wise men were, don't you? And how many of them were there? Do you have an answer for us there? If you do, raise your hand. There's, I think that's Henry. What is it, Henry? There was three. Three. And here's a further question. Do you know where they came from? Where, where were they when they saw the star? Yeah. Not sure. They came from a place called Persia. And they're called wise men because they were like scientists. And they studied the stars. And when they saw this conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, it shone bright to them. And they followed it. And guess where they ended up, Henry? Where did they go to? They went to Bethlehem, and there they appeared to Joseph and Mary. So we continue reading, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child, Jesus, and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Now, does anybody have a guess how many times Mary and Joseph together were visited by angels how many times do you think? Three, four, five, ten? It's interesting. It's not very many. It's only four. They were visited by four times, and then they were visited also in dreams and told by God where to go and what to do. So here's one of those four visitations from angels, and they were told to flee to Egypt, and we continue reading, and remain there until I tell you. Now, we know that Jesus and Mary were there about two years. What do you think the benefit was of them going to Egypt? Why would God and God's planning send them to Egypt, not only to escape the terror of Herod, but what was the benefit of being in Egypt for all those years? You might say it's like going to the best school. It's like going to a place where there's the Harvard of Harvard or the Yale of Yale, the best school ever. 
And in that place was the library of Alexander. And before that library was destroyed by fire, it was the place where people of great searching and great intellect and people of great fame and even our day, like, like people of, of, uh, of wisdom and theology would go to learn it. And here is where Jesus is for those first years. Now, some say he was there from the age two to the age four, and others say he was there until he was about 10 or 11. And so any way you look at some of, a, some of his early education was in that place that was a prize for education. We continue reading. The angel said, flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet Jeremiah out of Egypt. I have called my son. It's interesting when we talk about Herod because there are about three Herods mentioned in the Bible. So which Herod is this? This was Herod the Great. And Herod the Great was, was just a vicious, ruthless person. But he wasn't as ruthless as his son, Archelaus, who takes the throne over for him. Herod was so manipulative that the story of the building of Herod the Great's temple is worth telling. In those days, there was a rule that any building that you built that was bigger than a certain building in Rome you had to have approval from Rome itself to build that building. But if you were to leave your home and travel all the way to Rome and then get approval in Rome in person, which was required, and the building was built before you got to Rome, then the building would stay. Herod knew this rule and it took 10 years or more to build this temple. So he traveled to Rome for a while you see how long? And then the temple was finished by the time he got back. And so the temple could stand. He was very manipulative and very wise. And yet he was very evil. So Joseph hears that Herod is coming to town to Bethlehem to kill all the innocent children who are two years old or younger. And so he leaves for Egypt. Now, the, the text continues, when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, tricked, in other words, they left another way to go home, they didn't tell him what they promised to tell him, he was infuriated. Infuriated is an odd sounding word. We don't use it a lot anymore in our culture, but how mad do you have to be to be infuriated? Mm -hmm. Infuriated. He was infuriated. He, this man was heartless. This man had dozens of male children and he had all of them killed except two because they were not from the wife he wanted them to be born of. This man was notoriously evil. And so he sent his army and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. There's all kinds of references there that we hear every year during the Christmas season, but we don't understand. So we know about Herod, and we know about Bethlehem being the place where Jesus was born. But a voice heard in Ramah? Anybody know what Rama was about? Rama, where is that? It's a little tiny plains, a little tiny suburb of Bethlehem. And there was a terrible war there. And the war led to the disaster of many troops who were of the, of the, the Hebrew faith. And they were slaughtered there. And so it's a national place of mourning. Rama is grieving for all the soldiers that were killed there. But what about Rachel weeping for her children? Rachel was the wife of Jacob and she had trouble having children. 
And finally, when she was able to have children, she died in childbirth. And so there was a great national time of weeping in Bethlehem for Rachel and just out of sight of Bethlehem for the men of Rama who died in a terrible battle. They were weeping. And the text continues. Uh, a voice was heard in Rama wailing and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord, here's another one of those angels, suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Get up and go back to Egypt, he's told. Get up and go back to the land of Israel. Then Joseph got up took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. Now it gets interesting about these Herod characters again. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Now Archelaus was more ruthless than his father and Archelaus was actually named Archelaus Herod. And his brother, one of the Herods, was the ruler of Syria at this time. So the two brothers divided the kingdom of their father and they were the rulers. And after being warned in a dream, here's another dream, Joseph went to the district of Galilee. And in Galilee then he made his home in Nazareth so that what had been spoken through the prophets would be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. Now, many people think that the word Nazarene means that he was one, he would be like, like Samson, you know, the hair thing, you know, and he wouldn't drink any wine and he would be lived a certain kind of pure life. But actually in Jewish or in Hebrew, the word Nazarene means someone from the branch or the branch. Remember the text from last week? He will be from the branch or the shoot of Jesse. All this lines up in the Old Testament. All of it lines up and is put together by Matthew in this text. Jesus, raised in this miraculous place called Alexander at that time, will be a Nazarene. He will come from the branch of Jesse. He will live in Nazareth, a town in the hill country of Galilee, in the southern part of Galilee, in a little valley, kind of hidden away, quiet little place. So. We have lots of different terms in this text. Do any of these things raise a question for you that you're wondering about, you're thinking about? Anything, any question, wonderful questions. Paula, did you raise your hand? No, just, just scratching. <laughs> Carol, anything you're wondering about? Kurt, anything to add or Walter? Kurt's going over the text. I think the yeah. voice heard in Rama is interesting. Rachel weeping for her children. Um, the, the end of that verse is so poignant and she refuses to be consoled for they are not. That for they are not just slays you. It does. Yeah. And, and then when we tie that, it, that they are not in how it slays us, to the predictions that Mary and Elizabeth and Simeon and Anna make about this child, the people that are the poorest, the people that are the knots in the community, mm. the people that are without power, and then even us, because we die, are saved by this light mm. in two ways. One, we're saved by the light in eternity, but we're saved by the light because we are representatives of the light in our communities. I like that piece too, Kurt. You have anything else to add there? Well, just the, the fact that I think it's important to note that um, Jesus' family are refugees, right? They're mm -hmm. under persecution in their home. They have to leave their home and mm -hmm. go to a strange place uh, yeah. that doesn't know them and they don't know it. And, you know, that's the plight of so many people today. Yeah, and that's such a, 
uh, a wise thing to share because you, you, we can image in this in our own minds the, the fleeing to Egypt and then going home, but then having to flee home and go to a different home. Right. It's another ending for them. And that was in a span of what, a, of a, a vertical miles of like a hundred miles. They're fleeing, fleeing, fleeing continually trying to find safety. Yeah. Thanks, Kurt. Walter, any thoughts? Just, I would just recommend if you want to see a wonderful visual presentation of this, look at, you can find it on YouTube, the gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, filmed by Pasolini. It's just amazing. <laughs> Uh, and it's nothing but the words of the Gospel of St. Matthew and the visual presentation of the action. It, it, it's, a, it's the only good Gospel film that I know of. But anyway, it's a, could, you, could you quote that source one more time? It's called The Gospel According to St. Matthew. <laughs> and it's a mm -hmm. film by an Italian director named Pasolini. It's right. old. It's from the 1960s. But mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a great film. Yeah. Thanks. One pastor. Yes, Carol. One thing I noticed when I just, you know, was um, reflecting on this is how God pr is protecting Jesus all along in all of these different places. I mean, um, and we can think about that in our own lives of God protecting us through, um, you know, affirmity, you know, when things go wrong. So, um, there was, they didn't know their pathway to start out with, but every time something happened, then God is having them go with another step and he's protecting them. Yes, it gives watching over us a very new kind of meaning for us. And, and I like what Carol says, and in, in, a, in, in one way it's summarized on the cover of your bulletin if you have that, or can look it up online. The very last sentence of that introduction on the cover says, um, as we walk with all the holy innocence of past generations. And when I hear that phrase, I, in my mind scans through world wars and, and in Holocaust and every little thing that we don't know about history that would be just so terrible. And they suffered. And we suffer too in our lives at points. But the last, the last sentence gives us an affirmation which Carol raised in our gathering around the word and the meal. God continues to redeem us always, lifts us up and carries us as in the days of old. Nicely written. Yeah, Pastor, you mentioned um, um, Holocaust. I, I notice in some of the commentary on that Jeremiah passage that Matthew quotes, a voice heard in Ramah, wait, Rachel weeping for her children. Ramah was apparently a collection point uh, during the beginning of the Babylonian exile where the you know, people were brought together in one place prior to being expelled from their home and it makes me think of you know the the jews being rounded up in europe and you know in i, I remember in one of the italian towns i lived in there is a square that is now commemorated as the square where all the jews were rounded up mm. for deportation so that that rama has echoes you know in our in our lifetimes through the centuries it does this, there's never been a century without something as horrible. Yeah. And that, that's unfortunate, but that's why we cling to the redemption of Christ. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, I wanna move ahead now to the sermon hymn, which is What Child Is This by the Went Brothers. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, begin with, then we'll continue with the Nicene Creed. Okay, so we'll get to see Cody. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we'll get to see Cody. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. 
amazingly gifted young men. Wow. Let's continue with our confession of faith. Today we use the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of, of heaven and earth, of, of all that, that is seen and unseen. And unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son, Son of God, God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning we continue with our prayers and Tara Roberts will lead us in our prayers today. Well, I just sat down to do that and realized that the file Monica sent me doesn't work. Um, does anyone have it? Mm, I don't. Sorry. Well, uh, let us, let us, I'll lead the prayers today. Let us pray. Dear holy and gracious God, we thank you for this season. We thank you for our families. Especially this day in our families, we remember those that are elderly, that are in their homes that may be alone. We remember those who are suffering from disease or those who are grieving the loss of loved ones in this season. We remember those that are in nursing homes and we remember those who need our prayers and need our presence and need our gracious love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the nations of the world. We remember those places that have strife and have refugees and have people that are lost and that have people that are forgotten. We ask Lord that you would lead us and guide us in our ministry and in our gifting to them. We ask that our congregation live with such grateful hearts that we see others in need before we see ourselves. Lord, in our mercy, in your yeah. mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, we give thanksgiving, great thanksgiving for you and for the many things that you have given to us, our daily bread, our homes, our heated houses, our hot water, our food, our cars, the ability to have insurance to pay for medical care, all the things that we so often take for granted and see as something that we're entitled to. We thank you, Lord, for these great gifts that provide for a healthy life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, at this time, we ask that you listen to either the silent or spoken prayers of this congregation that's gathered virtually. We ask that you hear us as we pray for those we love, for those we miss, for those we grieve, for those that are sick, and for those that need us. Let us share our prayers. For those who have Alzheimer's, For those that are healing from broken bones.
for those that are grieving so deeply the loss of ones they love. For those who can't visit others and yet need the others for their own wholeness. For those that are in missions. For our congregation as it clings to each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, Lord, we pray for with thankful hearts through you and through the great gifts that you give us through the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time during our worship, we... We usually, when we're in our sanctuary, receive the offering. And following uh, the offering, then we continue with communion. And it's also at this time when we set our own tables with our wine, juice, bread, or gluten-free so that we can take the Holy Sacrament together. We pray the offertory prayer. Merciful God. It would have been enough for you to give us the fruit of the earth by which we live. But in this meal, by your promise, you also give us yourself. Use what we have gathered here in feeding the hungry world with your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with, with you. And with you, his oh. servant. O oh, come, let us lift our hearts to the Lord with, with hearts of lifted, lifted Thanks to him we render, with joy we come before him, in gratefulness implore him, with thankful hearts adore him evermore. Thanks and praise to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who has given us the gift of this holy sacrament. We praise his name and we join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts by all adored, heaven and earth cannot contain all the glory of your name. Hail, Hosanna, God most high, blessed is he who now draws nigh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now let us pray the Lord's Prayer in this new uh, contemporary version. Our Father, Lord, Lord, Lord on heaven, heaven high throne, throne, most holy be your, your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, in heaven the same. Give us this day the food we need, forgiven may we be. Into temptation do not lead, from evil set us free. Yours is the kingdom, unto you in grateful love we bow. And yours the power, Lord let us view your mighty presence now. The glory yours. Your praise be sung by angel hosts and all, in every land, by every tongue, forevermore. Amen. Take and eat the bread and the blood, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The bread of God comes down from heaven and gives life and light to the world. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you 
and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We pause for a moment for, for announcements. Are there any announcements today? Again, I have a, oh, go ahead. I have a quick announcement. I just put in chat. Um, some of you may know this. The Wendt brothers have a Christmas special from which maybe the bit we saw was taken. I don't remember. It's about a half hour long, a little more. It's just beautiful and it's on YouTube. So I put the link uh, there in the chat if anybody wants to see that. It's really, it's really nice. Thanks, Kurt. That's nice. Again, Monica is on vacation this, this, uh, this Sunday, visiting grandparents and such. And also is Janet doing the same. We miss them both, but we thank them for the music that they prepared for this day. And we also thank Philip, my son, who is here running the Zoom for Monica today. <laughs> Here's the benediction. The Lord bless and keep you, look upon you with love, be gracious to you, and cause our Lord's face to shine on you with his peace. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit the, the Savior close Spirit, beside us, God's love from, from harm to hide us, us the Spirit's, Spirit's power to guide us evermore. Us. Go in peace, share the good news, <laughs> Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And our closing video is again our handbells. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Lord bless and keep each of you and your families. Go in peace. Thank you. Love you all. <laughs>